tava le funam vili akroboshi kalibra sota idia vasata Zechariah chapter 12 and then verse 10 The Bible says and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitant of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication then they will look on him on me whom they pierced Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves uh, even for his firstborn son. Go to Matthew 7, very popular portion of scripture. Matthew 7 and then verse 7 to 7. 7 to 8, sorry. Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Are you there? I can't hear you. All right, the Bible says, uh, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, what happens to them? Now help me tell your neighbor, everyone who asks, receives. Now look for your next favorite neighbor, all right? And I tell him, everyone who asks, receives. Um, now, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, uh, it will be open. For a few minutes this morning, I'd like to share with you what I've titled The Spirit of Supplication. Help me look at him and say, The Spirit of Supplication. Father, thank you because the entrance of the world will give light, give understanding to us simple folks. Father, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue depend on the writer, and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let the purpose of sending your word be fulfilled. We give you glory, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, and amen. Please be seated in God's presence. There's a way the heat can really affect you, and it's like you are drowsy. Um, I want you to understand that right now that you are seated, it will be better. All right? It is better. Two more weeks, and this will be over. Can I have an amen? amen. Do you believe God for that? Yes, you are not sounding like you do. Do you believe God for that? Absolutely. Amen. All right. The spirit of supplication. The ability prayer is key. Prayer is commanded in the scriptures. Prayer is the responsibility of the believer. Prayer is the live wire of the believer. Prayer is commanded in the scriptures. Prayer is how a believer ought to walk with God. Prayer is the staff of the believer to walk with God. Without prayer, your spiritual life will be empty. Without prayer, your spiritual life will have zest and it will lack love. Dear believers, it is not a question of if you pray. Jesus said when you pray. Therefore, he said it that there will be a time when you will pray. All right? So men ought always to pray and not of faith. Luke 17 and verse 1. Listen, dear friends, we are called to pray. For true prayers, we have the incredible privilege of taking our needs to God. You've got a need? Then take it to the Lord in prayer. Through prayer, we have the right to obtain the blessings of God. Through prayers, we have the privilege to obtain the wisdom, the goodness, the favor, and the joy of God. I'm sure, and this will this is very key. I'm sure this is not the first time you are hearing about prayers. Raise your hand, it's my first time hearing about prayers. All right, so we hear about prayers, but why is it that we do not pray? Why is it that our prayers are not what it ought to be? Why is it that our prayer lives are not what it ought to be? I've asked believers this question. Why are you not praying? I know what I've found out is that every time they respond, they respond saying these things. Somebody say, I don't know how to pray. Somebody else say, I know how to pray, but I don't know what to pray about. Somebody else says, it's not about knowing what to pray about. Uh, my problem is that I get tired while I pray, so I don't have the strength to pray. If I want to talk about people for six hours, I wonder how they do it. I, I, maybe I'm speaking about you now. And uh, somebody else says, you know what, it's not even one of those things you are talking about. Uh, my issue is that I don't have the time. I, I don't have the time to pray. I know I want to pray, but I don't have the time to pray. And somebody else says, you know what, I don't even know how to start. How am I supposed to start? Uh, because you see, as believers, one of the things we do, especially when you come to church, is that we believe that people know how to start prayers. We believe that people know how to pray. So when we preach and say, pray, they don't even know what we are talking about. Because they don't know how they are supposed to start and how they are supposed to pray. All right? So I want to try and answer some of these questions today. I want to make it so you understand what does it mean when we talk about supplication. All right? 
uh, so that you get some of those things. I, I like to begin by saying some things to us, and I think those things are very important. Mm -hmm. All right, let's begin by sharing what I thought you, what I call the different types of prayers. Mm -hmm. All right, according to scriptures, there are different types of prayers. Um, I want you to follow me very quickly, very closely. Uh, there are different kinds of prayers. The first one is what I call the prayer of thanksgiving. All right, somebody says, "Sir, why, why should we pray every time? Why are we praying every time?" The first thing is that you ought to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Now, what is a prayer of thanksgiving? Is that prayer where you thank the Lord for His many blessings and graces over your life? You thank God for His many blessings. The Bible says in James chapter one verse seventeen that every good gift and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of Light, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of tongue. So you ought to pray a prayer of thanksgiving to thank God that you woke up this morning. Oh, thank you, Father, I'm alive. Thank you, I lifted my legs and it came up. Oh, I lifted my hands and it came up. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus, for your many blessings. All right? That's first thing. Listen to this. A victorious believer must always live a thankful life. Many of us complain so much about what we don't have and we neglect the things that we have. That you are not alone. That you have life. I'm telling you, it's enough to give thanks to God for. That you can breathe. That today you say you don't have so much money, but praise God you are not in the hospital. You are alive. These are reasons to thank God. Listen to this. Gratitude makes our communion sweeter. I found out that when people don't thank God, they are saying, I don't recognize that he's my source. Right? When the Lord gives you a job, you are going to thank him for that job if you believe that that job came from him. But if your uncle made a call for you to receive a job, you aren't going to thank God for that job. You are going to thank your uncle for that job. Right, so the starting place is for us to say, do we recognize that God is our source? So that's the first prayer. What's the first type of prayer? Prayer of thanksgiving. Follow me. Number two is the prayer of intercession. How many of you have heard people say, let's intercede. Let's pray. I'm in the intercessory department. You know, and we sometimes even as pastors say, we're making a call for intercession. And people don't really know what it means. What does intercession, what does it mean? It's intervening or pleading on behalf of another person. When I'm praying and I'm saying, Lord, help my daughter. What I'm doing is I'm interceding. Is somebody following me? If I'm praying and I'm saying, Lord, help my cousin. What I'm doing is that I'm interceding. Because the benefit of that prayer is not for me. I am interceding because I am pleading on that person's behalf. Not only, intercession is not only a thing we should do, it's a command of scriptures. Timothy, Paul's writing to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. He said, I urge them first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. You see that word? Intercession. Intercession must be made for people. You know the reason why we don't have prayer points? You know the reason we don't have prayer points? Because we are selfish people. Because our prayers is just about us alone. If you are fine, your son is fine, your brother is fine, then that's all. But if you pray for the church, you pray for your neighborhood, you pray for your friend at work, you pray for someone who is seeking the fruit of the womb, you pray for someone who want to get married, you are interceding for them. And intercession is one of the privileges that believers have. It's one of the commands even of scripture, sir. Jesus' Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, ever leave it to make intercession for us. So one of the ministries of the Christ is that he intercedes for the saints. That means every time, even when you are not praying, Jesus is pleading on your behalf in the heavens. I thought that's something glorious. I thought that's something wonderful. That whenever I see the heavens, I know there is an advocate there. There is the Christ there, and in his prayers, he's pleading on my behalf. That's why I tell people, God is not against you, God is for you. Because he's pleading on your behalf. That's the work of the Christ. Number three, very quickly, what is this prayer we're talking about? The type of prayer, another one is confession. Confession is an acknowledgement of sin. It's a kind of prayer. You see, in confession, you are not telling God what he does not know. Can I say that somebody again? In confession, you are not telling God what he does not know. Because everything is open and naked before God with whom we have to deal. 
He sees all things. But when we confess, I am aligning to God's will and God's, uh, to God's will and instruction. I'm calling sin what God calls sin. I'm saying I have missed the mark. And I'm saying, God, help me. I'm saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Psalm 51, verses 1 to 5. He said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Blot out. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. It is important we understand that somebody say, oh, don't confess. It leads to sorrow. Bible says godly sorrow leads towards, towards repentance. That's what scripture says. All right? So, and it's good. Godly sorrow is good because it helps you not to do that thing again. You understand what I'm saying? So, we, we've got to do that. And that's very key. And then number four. All right, we're talking about the kind of prayers. Right? What's the first one? Class? Thanksgiving number two? Intercession number three? Confession. And then number four, we have what we call the prayer of praise or adoration. Now listen to this. It is very strategic. You know, what we do most times uh, is that people, we confuse praise and thanksgiving. So when I say adoration now, you are thinking, what's the difference between thanksgiving and adoration or praise? You see, in thanksgiving, you are thanking God particularly for what he has done. But in adoration, you are thanking him for who he is. So it's not just what he has done in my life. Our God is not the good, he's not the God of bread and butter. We are not thanking him for his hands. We are thanking him for his person. So in adoration, you wake up this morning and you just decide to say, Lord, thank you for who you are. There's a song I love so much. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you were, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you were. You are thanking him for his goodness. Is somebody thinking God's goodness is worthy? You thank him for his goodness because goodness is not what he shows, it's his person. I'm thanking him for his constant love. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faith. Notice, did I thank him for everything he did? For his faithfulness. For his steadfast love that never sees. For his compassion that never change. For his power that keeps keeping. For his grace that made you wake up every morning. That gave you things that you don't desire. For his mercy that ensured you did not get what you desire. That's what I'm thanking him for. That's what I'm praising him for. Listen to this. If you ever lack prayer content, you don't have what to pray for. Read the Psalms. Read the Psalms. It will encourage you. It will help you pray better. Spend time reflecting on the person of God. I don't know whether you have people in your life who have walked out of your life. You know, I've been, I've been around now. It's going to four decades now. And I can tell you, I've had people walk out of my life. I've had people who, who said, we're going to be with you forever. But I look back. I can't find them anymore. I look around. I can't find them. They, they have disappeared. But I have a God who has never left me. In my good times, in my bad times, in my lonely time, in my happy time, uh, God is a constant in my life. That's why I praise him. That's why I give him praise. And then number five, that fifth kind of prayer, which is where we are going to tabernacle this morning. The fifth kind of prayer is the prayer of supplication. Supplication. You see, those are the general kind of prayers you will find in scriptures. And what does that word supplication, what does it mean? It simply means to petition. It means to ask. Ask God for things you want. Asking God for the things you want is one of the most common form of prayer you will find. Remember Matthew 7, 7 to 8? What does he say? One, two, three, go. Ask, shall be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Stop. It means, therefore, that if you don't ask, what will happen? You will not receive. If you don't seek, what will happen? If you don't knock, what will happen? Come to my house and say, and just stay there. 
And then you are, what, you are believing I've opened the door. Am I it? Because I might be going home, out. But you might have stayed there for hours. Right? Many times we receive things and mercy because God opened the door. It's not because we ask. See, when we ask, there is an assurance in scriptures that the door will be opened. That's what we mean by supplication. That's what we mean by supplication. It's to request or petition for a thing. If you get a job and then they give you an official letter, and in that letter they tell you the things you are supposed to get. Maybe they told you in December you'll get a 13th 13, 13 month salary. <laughs> and then December came, nothing came. January came. You thought they, were, they made a mistake, nothing came. By February, you should write to them and say, excuse me, what about the 13th month? According to the fourth paragraph, second line, <laughs> this is what you said and it didn't happen. Why are you doing that? You are petitioning them. You are asking. Somebody listen to me very carefully. You've got to understand that you've got to petition God. Supplication is from that Latin word supplica, supplicare. What does it mean? Simple word, supplicare. What does it mean? It means to plead humbly. To plead humbly. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7, the Bible says, Casting all your cares upon him. Casting. That is something you must do every day. Casting. That's a, that's a present uh, continuous. Casting all your cares upon him. Because what? He cares for you. I have a God that cares. Listen. Uh, if you have a father that cares, you will be delighted to ask him for things. Especially when you know he has the means. Right? But if your father is a bully, you will not ask him for anything. Because even when he asked, he didn't give you. God is interested in giving things to you. Don't be afraid to ask him. Don't be afraid to ask him. The Hebrew word for supplication, which I love, it says to entreat in order to get favor. To entreat in order to get favor. It has the root word for grace. To entreat in order to get favor. You know, when you want to marry a man, a woman, not our age, in, in the age that has gone by, <laughs> when you want to marry a woman, you will go to the father, right? And you will entreat for favor that he will allow you to marry his daughter. This age now, you might not even, you might not even let them know. You can just chat them that you, have been, you are married. Especially when you are not in Nigeria. You can just chat them and send them pictures. We've done it too. We've done it. But in those days, you are going to ask the father to entreat favor that you may ask this, the daughter. All right? The essence of supplication, therefore, is to raise a voice. Is to raise a voice to God that it will have favor on you and on the matter. Listen. Every time we pray, we are asking for favor. In supplication, you are asking that God will look upon you with mercy, favor, and grace. That's why we call it the grace of supplication. You are going to ask him to look upon you with grace, favor, and mercy. Upon you or upon a matter. So somebody say, God heal me. He's asking for grace for himself. Are you following what I'm saying? Somebody wants promotion on the job. It's on a matter. Do you see supplication now? So many times we pray, we are actually supplicating. But this is the essence of our supplication, is to ask that God will look with his grace. Upon that matter. Look upon with grace the fact that I've not had a job in a while. Look with grace the fact that though I've had a job in a while, I've been wanting to change my job for a while. Look upon me with grace. Let that situation let it change. That's supplication. Is somebody following what I'm saying? The Bible says, uh, Psalm 28, verse 2, Psalm 31, 22, Psalm 86, verse 6, uh, it said, my voice of supplication, have you heard? There is a guarantee that there is a God that hears even our voice of supplication. If the Lord is not hearing, it's because you are not saved. 
Every time you kneel to pray for his, his supplication, you are not interceding. Ensure favor is at the back of your mind. Ensure grace is in the front of your heart. Now, let me show that very quickly. Uh, because, you see, the essence of this is so that after now, we will know how to do these things. Not that I, I had a very powerful message. How does that sound? Two of you, come. I am fair, come. Come. Uh, third, fifth. Did you get the service? Hey, man. Is it come? Which prayer should this man pray now? All right, so we have five kinds of prayer. What's the first one? Thanksgiving. This man should thank God. Even look at his clothes. All right? So, in, in Thanksgiving, he raises his hands. And begin to say, Lord, what are you thanking him for? He said, thank you for my life. Am I alive today because God kept me? Am I alive today only because of his grace? He kept me. God's mercies kept me. So he's praising God. If you are saying, I wake up every morning, I don't know how to pray. I'm showing you how to pray. Thank him that you woke up. Thank him that you are alive. Thank him that you can breathe. Thank him that you had a job to go to, even if you are complaining about the job. Are you following what I'm saying? Let me say this to you. When you complain, you become stagnant. When you praise him, you go forward. Only praisers are, are lifted. Those who complain, they become stagnated. Ask Israel. They grumbled for 40 years they were in the wilderness. Why? Because they were complaining. So, but we do not reckon that time giving is prayer, but it is prayer. Oh, yeah, lift up. You'll be praying as just be thanking him. What's the second kind of prayer? Ah. You see, in intercession, what he's doing is that he just think right now about his about his mom and say, Lord, you will heal my mother. Lord, your hand will be upon her. Evranos yakapa. When they intercede, tongues is plenty. Why? Because they don't have so much details about it. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. So they begin. Let your healing let it flow now. He is not praying for himself. He's pleading on behalf of somebody else. Do you understand that? Begin to pray in the tongues. Third kind of prayer. Move, 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 move. Confession. Ah. <laughs> you know, we know that Christ has forgiven us. We are forgiven. But we need to understand that confession, if we cover our sin, is wickedness. I've seen what is sin, it is missing the mark. All right, I got angry this morning. And I called somebody by name. I wasn't supposed to call them. What many believers are taught to do is to say, hallelujah, I'm, I'm the righteousness of Christ in, in God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When you do that, uh, you are actually enforcing that negative character. You are enforcing that negative. But when you say, I repent of it, what does it mean to repent? It, has, it means to have a change of heart. That what I did is wrong. I now go to God and I say, God, what I did is wrong. Forgive me. You know, you lost your temper. Begin to ask the Lord to forgive you. I can't hear you praying. All right, so what do you do? The fourth kind of prayer, you won't miss it now. What's the fourth one? Praise. An adoration. He created him tall, but there is a God who is taller than him. Higher than the mountains. Higher than the everlasting mountains. The maker of the heaven and earth. I wonder what did he found the heart with uh, that it has still not caved in. Uh, I saw buildings fall, but I see the heart not fall. Uh, the one who created the everlasting mountains. Uh, the one who came down and the sea parted. Uh, the God of heaven. Uh, by his words, uh, Pharaoh and all his army were consumed in the sea. Is the God of heaven and the heart. Uh, he does not have a domain. He's not a king. You, let me tell you about the king of your city. The king of your city, when he leaves that your city, he's no longer a king. Nobody has the right to honor him. Because he's a king with a domain. But this God has no domain. His domain is limitless. The God of the heavens and the earth begin to praise him for that. And what is the fifth one now? Supplication. Now in supplication, what you are doing is you are pleading for mercy concerning a matter. There's a situation that seems to have been for a long time and nothing is changing. 
and you have prayed. Pastor has confessed. You say what you need is God's mercy. What I need is God's favor. What I need is the hand of God coming upon me. Because if Jesus will step in, this sin will be solved. I know. So I kneel down. And I began to say, now listen, in supplication, you know when you pray. You know many times what we do, if I tell you on that kind of matter, so begin to pray, that issue that has been a problem, say, Makapara, Oprekepe, Harotot, mm, keep quiet. In supplication is a hard thing to God. So there is, even if you are still going to get into tongues, which I will show you how the Spirit helps you to that, uh, it starts and it begins uh, with supplicare, pleading humbly for a change in that situation. It begins with supplicare, pleading humbly. Lord, stop, don't look at me this way. I graduated three years ago. I need a job, Jesus. And your word says, and then I begin to say what the Lord says. And I say, beyond all this, I receive your grace. And my job has come. I receive your grace. Uh, and then you can see me begin to say, Gianovre, Kepol, what the other But I didn't begin there. So if you ask me, when you stop somebody who is supplicating and say, What are you praying for? He can tell you. Have you found many believers? When you ask them what they are praying for, they can't tell you. It's okay. But I can tell you. I'm asking for a change in this particular thing. Somebody understand what I'm saying? Do you see how you can pray now? For those who say, I don't know what to pray for. Can you see these five levels of prayers? Have you covered these five levels? When was the last time you were thankful for life? When was the last time you just praised him because of who he is? You want people to say, you're a fine girl. Fine man. That, the, that, your, that your parents made sure that your leg was straight. There are things I, I don't know whether you understand you thank God for. You can't create. If I say you should draw, you can't even draw. You're a bad artist. God made you this good. You should thank him. You should thank him. Do you understand what we're saying here? Yes, Do you get what we're saying here? Yes, so this is how to pray. Wake up every morning and understand these things. Thank you and the Lord bless you. All right, let's go to the next section very quickly. All right, give me Zechariah 12, 10. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Now, let's take it deeper. I want to show you three things here. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. I'll show you three things here. What did God say? He said, I will pour on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. What did he say? He will pour on them. Speak to me. One, two, three, go. The spirit of grace and supplication. And supplication. Now, God says, I will pour out. He didn't say, I will give. He said, I will pour out. He could have said, I will give. But he said, I will pour out. You know why? Because that word pour out is the word shafak. In Hebrew, it is S-H-A-P-H-A-K. What does it mean? It means to give in abundant measure. It means to give plentifully. What does it mean? Shafak, it means to give intensively. God is not saying, I will drop a little on you. He said, I will pour out. I will pour out. Have they poured oil for you before? Have they poured oil for you before? If they do, it's different from just giving you a portion. Now look at that thing. He said, I will give you something. And he said, it is the spirit of grace and what? Speak to me. It's the spirit of what? Now, that S in that, in that, that spirit, is it capitalized or is it a small letter S? That tells you, and you see capital letter S tells you the person of God. Right? So, you see, I will give you the spirit. That means I myself will come for you. God himself will come for you. I am the spirit you need. And he called himself the spirit of grace and supplication. It means, therefore, that for you to supplicate right, you will need a helper to help you supplicate right. And the helper himself is God. That's why I tell people, God has never asked us to do something he has not equipped or empowered us to do. In prayers, God himself said, I will come. I will come and plead on your behalf. I will come and plead even with you. And what did he say, number three? He says, sir, and they will look on him whom they pierced. Who is he who they pierced? 
Are you sure? John 19, 37. And again, uh, the Bible says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. He who they pierced is Christ. Listen, if you are going to supplicate well, you've got to have Jesus as your focus, not how big that problem is. Is somebody this is what I'm saying? Many times what we do is that, for instance, if I ask you now, how many of you can believe God for 10,000 air? Raise your hand. You believe God can send you 10K? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Glory to God. 10,000 air. Amen. How many of you believe that God can send you 200 million air? Now, listen. The way we are is that the bigger what we face, the crazier it is for us to believe. I have a headache. I can believe God for healing. But what, when I, what if what I have is cancer? What if what I have is heart failure? What if what I have is diabetes? Can I believe God for that? Or I begin to write my will. Bible says, never you look at what you are facing. Look at Jesus. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Every time your focus has shifted from he that is pierced, your supplication will be blemished. You must ensure that whatever you go through, let your focus be on Jesus. And then, So the Bible says, I'll give you the spirit of grace and supplication. Is that what the Bible says? All right. Give me Romans 8.26. I want to show you something here. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Are you there? Is he on the screen? One, two, three, go. Read it. Stop. Likewise, the Spirit helps where? So you have weaknesses. But believers don't agree they have weaknesses. So. But the Bible says, here is how the help of the Lord comes in our weakness. He said, He helps us in our weakness. That word in Greek is a very, let me not even call it. It can be on the screen, but let me not call it. And what does that word help? You've seen it on the screen. Can you call it? Sunata Labomonai, something that close. All right, and what does it mean? It means to hold, to take hold together with someone, to help someone in fulfilling a task. To hold together with someone. To carry with someone. So there is a task before you. You know this is my task. I'm supposed to do this job. And you are trying to do that job. When I come and then help you to do it, then what I'm doing is that Greek word, sonata and bomanai. I'm trying to see how I can explain this in a very great way. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, let's do something. Um, so that you understand how the Spirit helps you. Don't worry. Be happy. Let her come. Hey, will. So you have something you want to carry in the place of prayer. You have something that you have been carrying. All right? And so you are going to carry it. That's your task in prayer. Carry that speaker. Banuma. 
Sunata Lamba Muna. Carry now. Don't push. Carry. All right. Try, try, try. You see, that's, that's how we struggle in the place of prayer when we pray on our own. Do you get this? That's why it's not lifting. That's why that problem is not lifting. You can see that she's trying to shift it. That's what you do by drinking. You shift your problem to tomorrow. And then you wake up tomorrow. And then you find out that the problem is still there. Somebody say, ah, it's not if And that's what you do also by betting. He says, the money I do not need that I used to. You need more money. That's what you need. The economy is affecting you. So you are trying to use Naira bet and all those bets uh, to help you in some problem. What you are doing is you are actually pushing it forward. Some people know what I'm talking about. They lost yesterday. Are you following what I'm saying? It, it's a painful thing. Uh, the heart did not come through. They have an issue. The issue is that they have financial problem. They want to They want to lift. Uh, they want to get up. They want to carry this. Uh, let us carry this thing now. She, she, she cannot, but come. So now you will see what the Holy Spirit does. Uh, when you give it to the Holy Spirit to do, uh, the Holy Spirit now look at her. Now the issue is that the Holy Spirit does not pray for you. The Spirit helps us in our infirmities. Uh, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, that word, Sunato Labom and I, does not say that the Spirit will pray for you. It's saying that the Spirit will pray along with you. So try and carry be carrying your problem. Now, carry the problem with her. You see, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Uh, and it lifts that issue up. Uh, you see what we're saying here? That is exactly what you need in prayers. Uh, that is what you need uh, in prayers. Does somebody understand what we are talking about here? In your issue, don't think I've got a scripture, sir. Don't think I know what to do. No, you don't. Uh, no, you don't. Thank you. All you need to do is to ask him. Somebody needs to understand that God is in the business of helping us. Do you understand what supplication means now? I kneel down before I even say a word. I say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. Help me here. And can I tell you three things that the Holy Spirit does when he's helping you? The first one, as you pray, the first thing the Spirit does is that he gives you wisdom. Let me say this to you. Wisdom in the place of prayer is giving you scriptures that apply to that matter. How many of you here have started praying before? And you're praying, God, that marriage, that, you have a project, maybe you are getting married. And you say, Lord, that wedding day will work. You didn't have any scripture. You just begin to say, Lord, help me here. And as you begin to pray, the Holy Spirit begin to give you scripture. Jesus came to Cana in Galilee. And at Cana in Galilee, there was supposed to be a disgrace, but it was averted because Jesus was there. You remember that thing? What made you remember? That's the Holy Spirit doing his help. That's him helping you. That's your advocate coming in. Uh, he begin to give scriptures. Uh, somebody say, I feel an headache. This headache is much. Uh, and as we begin to say, Lord, take it away. The Holy Spirit reminds you, he himself took your infirmities upon the cross. Uh, and by his stripes, uh, you are healed. Uh, as he begin to give you this, uh, he's doing his work. Second thing he does is that he helps you to understand that situation. You know, what you're going through is not too hard. The devil's ploy is to ensure that you think that it's so difficult. The Holy Spirit makes you understand. You know the way out. The reason many people are depressed is that they can't find a way out of their problem. If you can find a way out, then you can win. As you pray, the Holy Spirit tells you this is the way out. And then number three, what does he do? He ensures you get grace and favor before God. That's why the Bible calls him the spirit of grace. Don't forget that supplication is pleading for favor and grace on a matter. Do you remember that? Now, the spirit of grace now helps you. It helps you. Now, as I close, very quickly as I close, have I helped somebody? Can we close this way? You understand it now. Let me give you character of supplication. The character of supplication. Character of supplication. Very quickly. Number one, listen. When you supplicate, the first thing is that your prayer must be open and honest. In praying prayers of supplication, you must be open and honest. There is no need for high sounding words or seeking to sound like someone else. When you are supplicating, and you are really supplicating, you don't want to sound like your pastor. When you are supplicating, you don't want to sound like a tongue you had somewhere so that you can sound deep. 
You know how people pray? All those KJV. Thou, O Lord, our King. You see thirst in the heavens. And you look, you look at the affairs of men. Who is in heaven like thee? Who do I have on earth beside thee? There is no God like you, no rock like ye, like thee. You see, when you sound like that, you are sounding good, but that's not prayers. That's not supplication. In supplication, you are honest. Father, you have to heal this woman. If this woman should die, I'm almost finished. You have to heal this woman. You are, because it's your father. There's no need to be saying all those things you are saying. You are trying to pretend before God. It doesn't work. You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I like to translate it this way. Pray honest prayers. Pray honest prayers. Polite prayers never get anything done. Some of us are so polite. You know, you, have you met UK people? UK people are very polite. They are not like Americans. They, are, they say please for everything. Uh, they, they, they apologize for everything. You know, how many of us go to prayer? We are very polite. Don't say polite prayers. Talk from your heart. If you are struggling and you need help, you can form to your pastor. You can form in the choir department. Don't form before God. Jesus, you need to help me. Near that, Jesus, you need to help me. I thought this lady's issues are gone. But Father, the way I was aroused when Sister Tayo came, Sister Tayo came in. Ah, Lord, help me. If not, don't use me. I have a problem. I can't be used now. You see, that is sincere honesty. Not that you are saying, I didn't feel anything. Gama, 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 goro koto. Agara, goro, goro koto, koto. No, no. No, no, no. No, no. Something is wrong. Be honest with God. I need your strength here. I need your help here. Talk to him. You have a woman problem, talk to him. You have a money problem, you don't know how to manage money, talk to him. That's honest. You see, you want to get married and you are tired of being single. You are putting indomie so much, the Ausa man in front of your house knows. As you are coming, they are ready. <laughs> they are frying it already. The question is not whether you want egg. The question is how many eggs? They know. If you are really, really that tired, there's a way you pray when you need a wife. It's not the way you are praying now. That's not how to supplicate for favor. Scripture says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. That's why you need a spirit of grace and supplication. You need favor on that matter. If you carry your eyes to the market, you will discover that after the market has closed, you will be in trouble. Yoruba translation, Toba Moji Losoja. You see, when, you, when the Oja has finished, you discover that what you bought was not what you want to buy. What I ordered versus what I got. Listen, the only way to ensure that you can get a good thing from God is to ask of him. Many people, what they do is that they, they find a good man and say, God, this is the man. That is not the art of anyone who is sold out to God. Who are sold out to God, they are saying, God, is it, is it your will? Is that your will, oh God? Because I found out that looks are deceptive. Gentle ladies are not gentle because you saw them gentle in their faces. Only God knows the art of man. The Bible says everything is open and naked before God with whom we have to deal. He knows them. He knows them. I want them slim. I want them. God is telling you and is warning you now. Because after one child bats, you will be looking for that slim lady, you won't find her again. That's why God is telling you now. That's why he's saying go for that one. He knows that one is big. But he's telling you, I want you to receive the package the way it will look like. This, this is your future. Amen. <laughs> Give me Psalm 6, verses 4 to 9. Let's see scriptures. An example of somebody supplicating honestly in scriptures. Psalm 6, verses 4 to 9. He said, return, O Lord, deliver me. O save me for your mercy's sake. Verse 5. He said, for in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? Is that not honest? You can't say that to God. You will say, ah, he can come and kill me. The psalmist was saying, listen, there is nobody who, who will thank you inside the grave. <laughs> That's so honest. Honest. 
Next verse. He said, I'm weary with my groaning. All night I wake my bed, bed swim. I drench my couch with tears. When I say let us supplicate now, some of you will not. You'll be doing like you don't have any issues. Look at the psalmist. He says, I cry. I, that's why I love scriptures. Full of heavenly and, and heart realities. Can you see this? See, I drench. I know I have witnesses here. People who have drenched their couches with, with, with tears. That's supplication. Be honest. Talk to God. I cannot do this. How am I home? You can even form a song from it. I can't do this again. Lord, I need your help. Let's leave that. Let's go to number two now very quickly. I said supplication is number one. Is what? Is honest. Open and honest. Number two, it is intense and heartfelt. Let me say this to you. You know the reason why people sleep in prayers? Because that prayer is not driven by hunger and deep desire. That's why I tell people, before you rush to prayer, why not first of all think about what the lack of that thing has cost you? You know when I was growing up, I think it's better now. The church was very unfair to women when I was growing up. It's very unfair to women. Ah, total, total lack of respect. When a woman is married, even those who are older than her will begin to put air and respect in her name. But if a woman is young and is old, so if a woman is old and she's not married, everybody calls her by name. But suddenly one person just got married and the respect goes up like, and then you are wondering why women are desperate to get married. Because even in the home, they are, they are being abused. In church, they can see it that there's no respect for them. Until there is a ring in the hand. So get a goat, put a ring on it, it's fine. Just ensure you get something to put a ring on it. So they know that the guy is not okay, but they want respect. Everybody wants respect. And so when you get that ring, it's still not okay. Because that's still not the end of your life. But listen, I found out that when they begin to pray prayers, this is what took me there. And pray and say, oh, oh Lord, send my husband. There's a way those women pray. You know what? There's a desire. There is a need. Have you seen waiting mothers pray for a child? They don't pray the way you pray. They are broken. Why? They are praying from their pain of pain. From their place of pain. Listen to this. Supplication must come from your place of pain and desire. Somebody hear that? Supplication must come from your place of pain and desire. I've always said it that we may want the same thing, but the way we want it may be different. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may want a car. I also want a car, but our lack is different. You are trekking alone. I have four kids that I'm helping to cross the road. It's not the same level of desperation. Is somebody follow what I'm saying? And your desperation must show in the place of prayer. What whatsoever you desire when you pray, Mark 11:24. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you have it, and then you will have it. Believe that you receive it, and then you will have it. We must learn to communicate our deepest desire to God. Give me 4 Samuel 1. Let's look at an example in scriptures. 4 Samuel 1. And let's begin to read from verse 10. You remember the story of that woman? You know I said it, that when women are waiting for the fruit of the womb, it's a different matter. You see, Samuel's mother went to Shiloh. The same way she has been going to Shiloh. And some people will also come to, today and they will live differently. You know why? Because of how they came. Someone's mother has been coming and has been praying, but she didn't get answer. And it didn't affect her. But one day, they were hitting at Shiloh. And something connected to something on her inside. Something broke inside. She was very sad. And then she went to pray. Look at that supplication. And she was in bitterness of soul. And pray. The Bible says she was in bitterness of what? No, read that again. Was it against anyone? You know, many times we are bitter. She could have been bitter against the woman who is giving birth for her husband. Her own bitterness was within. Bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. So what did she say? Go on. Let's go faster. 
Then she made a vow and said, Oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of a male servant, remember me and not forget your male servant, but we'll give your male servant a male child. And then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Does that look like supplication to you? I thought you said you had to pray in tongues for God to hear you. Was he praying in tongues? Now, next one. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that he like watched her mouth. You see, when you are really praying, supplicating, something will be different about you. He like watched her mouth. She was, now what happened in the next verse, please? Now, Anna spoke in her heart, only her lips moved. Have you seen people who pray that way? But they don't do that pressing phone. They don't do that pressing phone. You know? Supplication. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. Next verse. How long will you be drunk but put your wine away from you? Verse 15. But Anna answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. I want to ask you a question this morning. We're talking about supplication. When was the last time you poured out your soul before the Lord? You know how we pastors know that you are guilty? When we say it, you look down. <laughs> Everybody, 90% of people here just look down. They couldn't look at me anymore. You've got to pour out your soul before the Lord. And you're going to do that this morning. Number three. Let's go to number three now. Now look at that. In supplication, it is specific. While praying prayers of supplication, you are very specific as it concerns your need. And that's why we tell people, pray in understanding. Don't just pray in tongues every time. You can tell. Why? Because you ask specifically for something to happen. I can, I can, there are, there are th you can come to me and say, when is it that we ask for a child in my house? And I will tell you specifically when we did. You can ask me, when is it that we specifically ask for the twins? And I can tell you specifically when we ask. Because if we prayed specifically in understanding. Look at the prayer of the mother of Samuel. She was very specific. If you will give to your male servant a male child. Specific. Many times when you ask for a job, you are not even specific. God, I need a job. God, I want a job. Seriously? Now they now called you for an interview. They said they will give you 70,000 total package. You are saying, what will I use that to do? Transport is 700. You are the one who said any job. God, give me a man. Now the one that came looks like a sheep and is a sheep. Why? Because you are not specific. Prayer is specific. Mark eleven twenty four, 24, Matthew 7, 7. What are you a treating of the Lord? Ask him. Don't say, God bless me. You know many times we say, God bless me. Oh, Lord bless me. Oh, Lord bless me. Oh, Lord bless me. I'm Vranda Balia. Oh, Lord bless me. I don't understand that prayer. I've never understood it. Because you are the blessed of God. Can you ask for something specifically that you need God to do? Let me give you an example of that as we begin to wind down. Matthew 20, 30 to 34. Matthew 20, verses 30 to 34. What does he say? And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. 31. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord. Son of David. Now listen. The cry of mercy got God's attention. It didn't God get them the answer. Did you see that? The cry, it got Jesus' attention. But it didn't get them the answer. Now look at specificity. This is why you must supplicate with specificity. Look at that. So Jesus stood and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? I feel God is still asking some people, What do you want me to do for you? You know, if Jesus should walk into this hall 
I asked some people, what exactly do you want me to do for you? Some people still not have an answer. My own answer, I cannot be more than five. It's not here. In fact, it's more than here. It's here. It's high. It's everywhere. If you look at me very well, you'll see it's there. I give you 34. 33, sorry. They said to him, Lord, read that together. One, two, three, go. Lord, that our eyes. How specific is that? How specific? Was it long? It wasn't long. Very precise. The reason why our prayer is so long in putting it together is because we are not honest. Lord, I'm just, it's just boring. I'm very bored. What you need is a husband. Say it. He, he won't kill you. He can see it. Just ask. What you need is another job. Can you ask? Stop complaining things are expensive. Actually, even when it was not expensive, you are struggling. And right now, things are expensive. I have to agree. Because I will be a very bad pastor if I cannot say that. It is. How are you doing? Ask your neighbor how are you doing. No, sincerely, how are you surviving? Ask them. Now, help me, help me shake your neighbor and say, I, I tell them, we will make it. God is for us. God is with us. Say, be encouraged. Tell the person, be encouraged. I was alive when Abacha was alive. And things changed. I know it will change. Surely there is an end. And the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Don't say only the poor are feeling it. The rich are buying fuel too. Everybody knows where it hurts. And I just want to take two minutes to just say, I see you. And I can tell you are doing well. Your service has gone down, but you are doing well. Right? Uh, you are doing well. You are doing well. Tell your neighbor you are doing well. You are doing well. You know, sometimes we, we come try and it's like, we're just putting pressure on ourselves again and again and again. Oh, God, no kill yourself. You are doing well. Tell your neighbor you are doing well. Praise God. And then number four, it is powered by the Spirit of God. I think I've shared on that, that the Holy Spirit is the one who helps you. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I think I shared that, right? That the Spirit helps you. And I showed you an example how the Spirit helps in supplication. And then from the five, finally, you have to keep your gaze on Christ. I think I've also spoken on that. You have to keep your gaze on Christ. Look at him and say, keep your gaze on Christ. Look at your next favorite neighbor and say, keep your gaze on Christ. If you look at men, let's preach together. I will share the honor with you. Say, say to them, if you look at men, you will be disappointed. If you look at God, you will never be disappointed. If you look at what you are facing, it will be challenging. If you look at the problem, they will look like giants. But if you look at God, you will surmount it. Do you have winners in this house? Do you have triumphant people in this house? Do you have winners in this house? Do you have the ransom of the Lord in this house? Somebody say, I know he died for me. I know he paid the price for me. And if he gave his only son, how shall he not together with him give me all things to enjoy? Stand on your feet. I want us to just supplicate for five minutes. Now, I will give you a chance. You know, I think it's Zibide Melaba that sang the song, Give me a chance, I want to praise my God. Give me a chance. Don't play it too. Because I know. Now, what I want to do is, I want to give you a chance to pray. I want to give you a chance to pray. I want you to take advantage of this ground. You are on holy ground. You are in the place of answers. I would just want to pray. And I want to just give you five minutes. Is it okay to give you five minutes? Now, when I say that, I mean that you can live where you are. All right? If you want to kneel, you want to lie down, it's okay. But you know what I said you should do? Supplicate. What supplication is what? Is open and what? 
Open and honest. Number two is what? It's intense and coming from a hard desire. Number three, what is it? It's specific. So that you say, I remember on, what's today's date? Of September, I prayed and the Lord answered me. You've heard pastors say that. That that's when I prayed and the Lord answered. It was God they supplicated. You see, when you pray in tongues, you can't be that specific. Because even your understanding is unfruitful. That's what scripture says. Somebody wants somebody to be saved. I finished with this testimony. Some years ago, they called me that my dad was dying. Mom called and uh, she just started crying on the phone. And she was just crying. He can't talk. He can't lift his leg. Ah. And you know, he, when they are calling that like that, they don't, it's not a normal call. Daddy, daddy, you will know that it's a lot of struggling going on. I remember where I was. I just dropped the call, went into the room, shut the door of the room, knelt down, and I began to supplicate. I interceded for him. But listen, in my intercession was supplication. So you can intercede and supplicate, right? In my intercession was supplication. I was pleading for God's favor on his behalf. It's intercession, right? But I was not praying for it. And that day, I obtained some years for him. From that day, when they called me, I said, ah, Daddy is feeling something. I don't even bother. You know why? I've obtained the years. I know the years. He can't die before those years. But after those years, even me, I'll be keeping money. <laughs> you know why? After those, why? Because on that day, I took it. I took it. Who is ready to take it today? Who is ready to receive? You see, I, I'm, God, I want a job. God, I want you. You don't have to make it a, a, a consistent prayer. Today can be that day. In the oven, fire is. In the oven, bread is baked. The refiner's fire is for silver. Somebody is coming out of here as silver. Someone is coming out of here as gold. Pick a prayer angle. Pick a prayer posture. You want to pray for five minutes. Pick a posture. You want to lie down. You want to kneel. Whatever you want to do. You want to walk around. You want to go to the back. Whatever you want to do. Begin to pray. 